when the book came out, we were, I don't know, we were ready to have to defend the book. We didn't, we thought we were going to have a lot more hard time sort of selling, not selling the book, but getting people to believe in the book. But um, wouldn't you say that's fair? I would. We were ready just to have to defend each, some of the more critical parts of the book. But, you know, I, I think we did a good job. You know, we spent over two years doing it. There's a lot of detail. And, you know, there's enough detail in there. People... People understand that it's, it is the truth, and obviously, since then we've had the USADA report. And um, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm kind of tired. <laughs> and it was kind of take, funny. I mean, we started, we but, met two years ago in a yeah, in a I, hotel room in a Marriott residence in in Boulder, Colorado. Yeah. Chatted for about two days, and at the time there, we were wondering if we had, you know, we knew this was true. We knew it was explosive, but we didn't know that the world would turn out this way in this kind yeah. of perfect storm of, of information coming out. But it all has. At the time then, I think we had faith that the truth was going to come out, and it has. And here we are. Yeah. It's been, yeah, it's been a wild ride. But it, it's, in terms of an award, like an award like this, no. I mean, wild streams couldn't, didn't even remotely think about it or. I, I had no idea that people really outside of the cycling world would be interested in this book, and it's obviously the case that they are, and it's been a, quite a pleasant surprise. Yeah, it's been great, because it speaks beyond just the sporting world. Yeah, Tyler's always said, you know, when we sat down, and we sat down for hour after hour, he could he could tell the story in another form. We could have a documentary film, I guess, or we yeah. could sit here, but it would be about seven days long. I mean, to have it in a book and to be able to corroborate, my role was to corroborate his information with many other cyclists to make sure everything was accurate, full and fair. So um, a book was the best way to deliver that. And it's the best experience to deliver to people that they can go and immerse and hear Tyler's voice and hear my voice also in there sort of telling this whole story in a cinematic way. Because it really does read sort of like a spy novel when you get down to the It's the only way I could have done it. Because obviously, you know, there are a lot of layers. It was like an onion. Like Dan was basically started with this big onion which is me and peeling off the layers there's a lot of layers there are a lot of things you know i couldn't remember then all of a sudden boom like he just hit a key word or bring in this key race back in you know 1999 and it would, all of a sudden boom i'd remember something just it was a lot of time we, had to, it was we probably skyped for a thousand hours for the whole thing we talked a lot we do yeah. sometimes 10 hour conversations and we'd watch a YouTube video together of a race and Tyler would talk me through it. So it was this intensive reporting experience and I was sort of the psychologist, the, yeah, the confessor. Not, and, he's like my therapist. And I would listen to the story and that's, that's what we've got here. It's, yeah. It was fun to translate yeah. all of that into this. There's been a lot of support all along, more support than I would have thought. You know, the world was ready for this story. The world was ready for it. And when the USADA report, when a thousand pages of the USADA report came down to basically validate and verify everything that's in here, um, I think people understood it. I think people are seeing the truth and the world's ready for this story and ready for this book. The, you know, the response has been overwhelming. If you look at the Amazon reviews, either here or in the U.S., they're overwhelmingly positive. They're feeling the redemptive part of this story, which is the power of somebody pulling away this curtain and telling the whole truth. Not part of the truth, not 80% of the truth, but 100% disclosure. And there's a real power in that. And that's what people are responding to. Having previously written Lance Armstrong Tour de Force, was the whole writing process of this very different from writing that book? It truly was. I mean, it was deeply different. You know. It was called Lance Armstrong's War. It was, over here, it was called Tour de Force. Oh, they had nice. a different title. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm sorry. I didn't know that. Exactly, yeah. It was very different. There, I was kind of on the slightly on the outside of this world looking in. And with Tyler, Tyler gave me an all-access backstage pass to the biggest sports scandal, biggest sports story in history. So the reporting process was very different. Um, also, in just terms of corroborating everything to make sure it was accurate. Was, was something that I had to do here, which I didn't have to do as much with the other book. Um, but yeah, it was, it was this two books sort of form a pair in a way. One from, one from one point of view, sort of moving throughout the world, never going fully inside the dark side. And this told from inside the dark side. And that was only able through the relationship with Tyler. I don't know when it all started. I don't know when the doping culture started. It was, you know, when I, I basically arrived in 1997 to this top tier of cycling. It was in full swing, you know. So I don't know if it was, you know, back in the 80s. Some people say it had started in the 70s. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure really who's to, 
I don't really think there's one individual that you can point the finger at. I think it was really everybody deserves a little bit of the responsibility, obviously me included. Um, you know, I think the UCI has, you know, you have to, they have to take some of the responsibilities. The, the race organizers, even the journalists have a little bit of the responsibility. Right, what else? Yeah, yeah, no, it's a cultural question, right? It the is. culture was dirty and it the is. culture it was is. toxic. And people allowed it, you know, it obviously was, got started. I don't know where it got started. And we're trying to figure it out because we do need to figure out where it started, how, like what went, went wrong and when, because we, in order to prevent it from happening again in the future, you know, that's important. 